bass strings. You know them. You love them. But are you using the wrong ones for both your tone and your technique? Spoiler alert. Probably. Metal Bass Monday. Well, welcome in. And if this is your first time here, uh, this is kind of what goes on. Uh, lots of talk about bass in general, but uh, especially from a rock and metal perspective. I uh, hope I earn your subscription today. Much appreciated if you hit that bell and hit a like, and even if you share it. It definitely helps out, and especially since uh, I've gotten notices a lot of times from you guys that uh, even though you've subscribed, you're getting unsubscribed. So I'm not sure what some of the problems are lately, but uh, the subscriptions always help. Turn on the alerts and notifications uh, so you get to see the weekly show and the other stuff that pops up. Uh, some more gear demos coming this week. And on top of that, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to keep on with the technique and chop type of themes like we did last week. If you didn't see last week, I did a mini bass solo with a number of techniques in it. Check it out. And uh, patrons got an extended version of that with a couple of drum tracks and some things to go along with a little deeper understanding of what was in it. If you'd like to become a patron on top of it and help the channel out, those links are down below. Uh, subscribe star, Patreon. It's always much appreciated, and thanks so much to my patrons. I hope you guys enjoy it, and more to come. Every Technique lesson will have an extended portion for you guys. So with that, let's get into some strings. I get asked constantly about strings. I would say probably more than any other question next to pickups. I know it's something we blow a lot of money on, and especially because for bass players, it's even more a crucial part of our tone than guitar players. There's a problem here that... I want to make sure it gets across, and I'm going to show you some ways of figuring out what's right for you. But I think one of the biggest problems is, is everybody expects an easy answer with this. And as I've railed against probably 8 billion times on the channel, easy answers are always almost worthless answers. Uh, I get asked, you know, what gauge do you use? Uh, what about it? My B strings floppy. What do I do? This... Uh, I need to downtune. Should I change gauges? Should I do? The answer to all of it is maybe. <laughs> and I realize that's frustrating, especially when, you know, we live in the quick answer society and everything's in preset, but it really is that way. Some more thought has to go into it because it depends on your technique. It depends on how you set up your base. It depends on the brand that you're using. And just saying a gauge should be a warning sign to anybody. That if somebody just jumps in and it's always in these Facebook and internet forums, oh, dude, you totally need to go up to 145 for this, this, or that. It's like, well, with what height of action? Are your strings stainless or nickel? Are they round core or hex core? All of these make dramatic differences. Just going from a round core string to a hex core can make a huge difference in the amount of perceivable tension at the same gauge. So automatically just screaming that you have to throw on these redwoods to, onto your neck just to suddenly have enough tension isn't taking basically 90% of the factors you need to think about into consideration. And that's why, again, simple answers are made by simple people. <laughs> Don't listen to this stuff, but I'm going to show you how to start figuring some of this stuff out and the considerations you need to do. The main consideration is, and the thing I find that people do, not just with strings, but with gear in total, is they throw it into an already existing gear setup, and if it doesn't immediately make the change that they want, they just discard it. And that's just not the way it goes. The fact is, your gear and your sound is kind of an ecosystem. If you change one element of it, you have to change the other ones to accommodate. So I'll have guys that'll put on lighter gauge strings or something. They'll go, oh, it's too bright. No, I don't like this. Take them right back off. It's like, well, did you try reducing your treble? You know, those, those knobs on your amp do stuff. Like, <laughs> and it kills me that, you know, people will get their sound with the strings they already use and then ex expect anything new to automatically work with those settings. You have to change everything around to accommodate it. And I think that's one of the big reasons why so many people struggle with string choices is that they expect, again, the easy plug-in thing. And something's just going to sound magic with 
however they've already dialed in their knobs. You have to change things up a bit and try it out. The other is that it can come down to your technique. And that's why I kind of wanted to address this one, not only because it gets asked constantly, but because we're in the middle of doing some technique things, this can affect your technique because different gauges of strings and different techniques can yield different results. One of the things I hear all the time is this thing about all oh, there, you know, a, a string is too flapping or booming, or it doesn't feel like it has enough tension. And maybe, maybe it's, you know, again, that you should switch to a hex score and that in the same gauge, and that's going to feel better. Or you could not beat the hell out of your bass. <laughs> that may be an option. You have to consider that too. You know, should I not play so damn hard? I've seen this all the time, and I've watched this Ouroboros snake eating itself thing with these guys sometimes that go with these ridiculous gauge strings where they'll pick like hell. And then they'll go, oh man, I'm, I'm not getting enough resistance from the string. So then they try heavier strings. So then their tone gets really dark and they don't have any definition. So then they start hitting it even harder, trying to get more definition. And then that's not working. And But now the string starts flubbing again because they're hitting it even harder. So it's this nuclear escalation of string versus raw eight power going at something. And it never resolves until either you break your wrist or you have a fretboard size single string that you're beating the hell out of. Anybody who sits here that tells you that you have to play with a certain level of pressure or a certain attack or anything else, immediately disqualify them from any kind of valid advice because they're not you. They don't know how you play. They don't understand how your base is set up, anything like that. So you have to be able to experiment with this stuff yourself. And I can give you some tips on how to be able to make certain educated guesses towards how something should go or where your path should lead you. And the thing is, you just have to experiment. I know it's the worst crime in internet history to say you have to put in time and you actually have to find out for yourself. It's the only way out, though. You can be mad at me all you want. You can send me <laughs> crappy comments in the, the uh, comment section or frustrating emails. I'm not trying to be obstinate. I'm genuinely trying to help out. At the end of the day, nobody's going to be able to help you but you, because only you know exactly how you want it to feel and how you want it to sound. So let's check out some ways of picking out what our bass should sound like and what kind of string should be on it and how we should be attacking them. So here's an easy test for gauging if where your ad is already right for you and you should be pushing further in that direction or if lighter gauge strings would happen for you. And like I said, it's a complete myth that you can't play with lighter gauge strings and get a solid bottom and things like that. You may have to adjust your technique, but again, don't beat the hell out of your bass and you can solve the problem. So let's give a quick listen to how this sounds, you know, just normally and see what we want to do as far as moving to say a heavier gauge. So that's our zero point. This is in standard tuning, and this isn't a super heavy gauge. To me, sounds pretty meaty to me. But what I want to do if I'm messing around with my sound is go, okay, I already know that basically it's just going to get darker if I add heavier strings. What would be the consequence in the same gate or the same brand and the same style and the same core of string if I go up a little bit. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a string that has slightly less tension, not too much, at the same gauge, but you're also going to get you know, less actual mass and you're going to get a brighter tone out of it. So what you can do is a quick approximation. What I'm going to do here is go, okay, if this note here, my fifth fret and the open above it are the same note. This one's a lighter string, obviously. 
So if I want to kind of hear, say, what this string is going to sound like, if it's in a lighter gauge, I can get a little bit of a clue by taking a lower note, like say D or D flat, we'll start with D, and detuning my E string down to D to hear what it does with slightly less tension and a deeper note. What characteristics does it take on? Okay, so now let's hear our D on the B string. Now let's hear the D open. So to me, I hear a bit more clarity. I actually hear some more grunt. It's got a nice gurgle to it. To me, if you're going for real mids and real cut through, this is kind of a chunky sound. I'm inclined to actually go for a slightly lighter gauge. If I can get, if the difference is in between these two notes and I tend to like that second sound. So what I might do then is probably get this exact same brand and uh, series of string, but order it in the next gauge down. You know, if like this is a, you know, 125 or 130, I may go for a 120, do the extra light. So that's a quick way to start hearing the characteristics of how this is going to go. Right away, I can sit here and go, okay, I hear a slightly more throaty mid and that's what I want. But if you're a real massive wall of fundamental that you want that thing that's almost felt more than it's heard, That's maybe your jam right there. You've got a bit of clank on top to be able to cut through, and you've got some thump. Now, the other thing that this can help you do is because this string has now gone from standard pitch to a slightly lower pitch, is going to a lighter gauge isn't going to be as slack as this will be, but it'll be slightly less tension. It's going to be in a thinner gauge but it'll give you a general impression of like, well, if I can tolerate how this tension feels, then I know I'm good with how it's gonna feel going to a lighter gauge. This definitely feels a bit, you know, it moves with me a little more now. So instantly I can tell, whereas with here, I dig in a little more because it takes a bit more to move mass with the, the string and the weight of it and get it to actually sound out. I do have to show more control with the lighter and the detuned string, but I also don't have to hit it as hard because it does move. And again, if we're going for an aggressive sound, lowering that action down, getting that smack off of the frets is really going to give you that twang. So in a way, it's kind of a blessing. I can lighten the hell up and get the same type of attack and clang and rip and tear out of it as I do when I really beat this. Check out the difference. I'm going to really lighten up my attack and play that note open. Now I'm going to lay into this note and do the same thing on the B string. So I'm not getting quite the same aggression out of it. So all these people that are like, well, you know, to get the real clear notes and the real, you know, you really have to dig in. You have to do all this. It's crap. Complete and utter crap. For them, it may be that way because maybe they have really high strings and they probably play with a pick and they really jam on their notes. And that's the re desired result for them. They're make, looking for more fundamental. They want more this than this. So again, it's half the time when you're asking for advice on these things, you're not coming maybe from the same reference point. That guy may want this note and you want this note. So you can't get that advice again. You have to integrate it into your own setup and your own EQ. So for me, like with this bass, uh, I like this and, you know, I like the tone that I'm getting out of it, but I prefer this. So the next time I restring this, I'm going to go up a gauge. I, up, I mean lighter. And just to give you an idea, this is tuned to B. 
I'm actually going to drop this to A and let you hear that I think it's, it actually lends itself to uh, kind of being in there. Let me retune my other string first. Now let's hear A with this gauge string. Just a, a good grunt in the same way that detuning this string did. So if I were to pick uh, a bass that in with this gauge that I wanted to tune to A, I'd probably do this gauge that I'm already at and set it up that way. If I wanted to tune back up to B standard, I'd probably go up to a lighter gauge. Now, just to make my point, this is drop tuned to A, okay? And I haven't made any other mod modifications. Plenty of fundamental, plenty of definition, lots of grunt, sounds good to me. This is a 125 B string. To most of these, you got to play tubby strings, guys. I'm not making fun of high gauge strings. I'm making fun of guys who say like it's some kind of magic answer and they insist that it's the only way you can do it. I'm getting a nice, clear, solid fundamental with tons of cut and meanness out of a 125, which to them is considered like rice paper. So explain that. It's because I set my bass up correctly for it, for the way I play. I keep the action lowered. I know how to attack with my right hand. I don't have to beat the hell out of it if I don't want to. Sounds good to me. Tons of grind. Ev like everything I want in the Sonic palette is present there. So do, you can't get this advice without it being on your base with your attack. And the thing is, when you're trying different gauges, remember what I said about the ecosystem. You have to not only put it on and try it out, you have to make other adjustments to see if something in your equation isn't the thing that's holding it back. It's not always the strings. It may be that the new strings with the EQ is not working out right. Or it may be your attack. Or it may be the way your preamp set. Or, you know, it can be a hundred different things. So commit to it. You know, when you have a problem on your base, try making changes here first. It's almost like this is what we use that touches the strings. Try making those changes first. Play a little harder. Play a little softer. Lower the action. Raise the action. See if those make a difference first, and if you don't quite get there, but something seems like it's going in the right direction, hey, I raised my action, and it sounded and felt a lot closer to what I wanted. Well, then you probably want a, you know, a bass that's set up with a little less fret clank, and you want higher tension. So make sure that you're using hex score strings, because they're going to be the highest tension, and probably stainless. Stainless tends to be uh, not always, but tends to be more taut than a nickel string is going to be, and run from there. So that can make a big difference and save you a ton of money and head you in the right direction and not blow a lot of money on doofuses on the internet leading you in the wrong direction or giving you idiot advice. So that's the short and dirty guide to this. I hope this kind of breaks some of it down and helps you out and lets you see that there's a little bit of mad scientist experimentation that goes into this. But if you do that work, you're going to get there a lot faster and it's going to work out better for you. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know what's worked out for you. Has anything surprised you? Definitely numbers of different strings and gauges and things I thought I should like and I was told I should like didn't work for me and others I didn't think would did. So let's chat about it down below. And as always, I appreciate you being here, hanging out, keeping the conversation going, and I will see you on the next one.